Hello makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. It's good to have you here. Now today we're going to work on another one of our one hour masterpieces. And today we're going to be building uh, this. Yeah, right here. Uh, you can see it. I haven't built it yet, so I'm going to have to wait, but at least you get a sense of what we're working on. And the concept today is to really do something almost like quilting using pieces of paper. So we're going to use cut paper collage and we're going to create an interesting pattern out of it. Now one of the first things I need to take into consideration here is my materials. And I'll share with you why I have a, a sheet of, well, formerly white, uh, white paper here. You know, the thing about working in any kind of a studio is that sometimes your materials get a little, uh, a little scuffed up, right? Because in this case, this has been sitting under some other things as an open pad, there's, uh, there's stains on it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. You're not missing a whole heck of a lot. But the reality is it's not as white and pristine a surface as I might like in order to be able to paint on it or do whatever I might want to do. But White is not the only color we have at our disposal. And so what I want to do here is I want to be able to create a black background that we can use as the foundation for this project. And that's easily enough done uh, with some black paint. So I'm going to use some of my Apple, uh, Apple Barrel Plaid uh, paint. It's, uh, I buy it in bulk because it's good coverage. Uh, it's affordable and uh, it does the trick. And uh, let's just get a little some of this into... Uh, into my palette here. And again, you can make a decision if you want to water things down, you get different effects, of course, though the wetter it is. I'm going to use just a standard uh, spo uh, sponge brush here. And uh, I'm going to say sponge foam, and so that'd be spoam. So we're going to go with a spoam brush right here. But I'm going to come in here, and again, let's, uh, let's start to just get a foundation of black down. And the nice thing about this black, first of all, it covers incredibly well. It also dries really quickly, and it dries relatively smooth, so you don't end up with brush lines which is, you know, obviously a, a big thing. I'm going to definitely need more than, uh, than that little bit of black to work with, however. So, so uh, yeah. And again, this is going to be an 18 by 24 inch creation. And I've done a little bit of thinking, obviously. Uh, you know, you have to kind of plan these things out. I, I don't over plan projects. I usually have a visualization at some point of like, wouldn't it be interesting if, and then I kind of, I kind of mull it over sometimes in my head Sometimes I'll take a, a pencil and paper and kind of draft some things out. But sometimes what I end up doing is saying, you know what, this would be an interesting concept for uh, a one-hour one, uh, one hour mixed media project to share with my friends. And so uh, here we are. So we'll see how this goes. I, I might learn some things along the way. I often do. All right, we're going to need more black paint to make this coverage. And actually, by the way, sometimes, and I, maybe it's cheating, but I'll sometimes just put the paint directly on the paper like this and uh, smear it around. Uh, is it cheating? I don't think there's any such thing as cheating when it come, comes to making artwork. No absolute right way to do anything here. We're going to make it work for us. Yeah, this, this definitely speeds things along. And as I've shown in a previous video, one of the things you can also do here if you want to paint super fast is a slightly damp sponge. If I hit this with a slightly damp sponge, I could wipe uh, black paint all over this in a matter of seconds. Um, I decided to go with a brush because I want to have a little bit more thicker coverage, but uh, that could certainly work for what we're doing. All right. And we'll get that last little bit of white in here. Uh, and now we're going to have a uniform piece of black paper, which we can use as the foundation. Make sure you get any of those white specks. Get everything smoothed out best you can. All right, it's already drying really fast. And so I'm going to give this a few more minutes to dry, and then we're going to jump in and figure out what's going to go on said black piece of paper, and how are we going to make it uh, pop the way we want it to pop. So come on back. All right, welcome back. Now I've been able to put an extra layer of paint on the paper just to make it a little bit more opaque and, and make it more uniform in, in our darkness, our black color. The next thing I want to focus on is what's going to go on top of that black layer. And uh, as you can see here, I have an assortment of different pieces of basically cardstock. This is a, a relatively thick paper and we're going to be using this as a foundation for the different pieces that we want to create and put on our black background. And what I'm thinking here is just basically kind of each piece is going to be two good colors that fit together in an interesting way. We're just going to basically make some stripes. So I'm going to have like a blue and a green and we'll make a stripe. Now I've already planned ahead and I've created a number of uh, what we'll call them cards. But these little squares, which are two and a half inches by two and a half inches on black cardstock. And the objective here is I want to be able to create these independent pieces that later on when I go to mount them on my black sheet of paper, 
I have some I have some leeway. I can move things around. I can turn things. I can dry fit them before I actually put them where they're going to go permanently. And so this is going to give me an opportunity to build these independent pieces that I can then work with later on. And the the, the main principle. By the way, uh, I used a, I used a paper cutter for this, and I can put a description uh, a link in the description below if you don't have a paper cutter. You can also use a straight edge and uh, one of my favorite tools in the entire world, which is my rotary cutter, which is used. Predominantly for quilting and cutting fabric, but really good for cutting straight lines and paper. So I find that to be very helpful. Anyway, you want to make this as uniform as you can so we can have something that looks like it, it belongs there. But the overall objective is going to be to create a, a, an interrelationship between several of these different colors. Let me find two that I think are going to work here. Well, here we go. I've got a, a really bright yellow and this nice uh, turquoise blue here. And as I said, you know, sometimes just working with a straight edge, like uh, again my quilting ruler, one of my go-to tools here. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to drop down and let's just say we'll make a, a straight cut here. Okay, so there's one piece that I'm going to need for the future. And I'll do the same thing on here. And again, I don't mind if they're a little bit angled even. They might be kind of more interesting if they're not straight up and down all the time. Your, your mileage may vary. Depends on what you want to end up doing with this. What this is going to allow me to, to do now is if I take my black piece of paper and use it really as the foundation, what I want to be able to do is have these pieces of paper, and I want to make sure, of course, that's one of the reasons having a nice straight cut edge is that you can have them butt up against one another really tightly. Let's make sure they I have them on the right side so we can do that. And uh, they're going to do that pretty nicely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black piece of paper, I'm going to grab a glue stick, and I'm going to start covering that black piece of paper with uh, a, a fairly thorough amount of glue here. We'll be generous because I don't want this to come unstuck. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the black sheet of paper, my little square, and I'm going to put it here and I'm going to create an interrelationship between these two colors. And again, I could choose to have the same amount of black, uh, blue I should say, the same amount of yellow if that's what I wanted to do. I've decided I actually want to have them a little bit more, uh, more on, on the blue side here. And uh, since I already have a, you know, some more room to kind of work here, I can get a couple different squares out of this. I may not use all of them, but I might as well come in here. I cut a few of the extra black ones just so I have some options later on. Because you might try something and say, mm, that doesn't look as good as I wanted it to look. All right, we'll do this one. It'll be a little bit more even on the blue and the yellow. Right? But that's the overall concept here, is we're going to come in here and we're going to mount the black on the back of our strips as they're pushed together here so we can create a, a piece that has both those pieces in place. And then what I want to be able to do, again, using uh, my rotary cutter in this case, as well as perhaps my, uh, my straight edge here, well, probably makes sense, is I want to cut along that black line. So I'm going to get this in here. And, and again, I'm not worried about, you know, engineering precision. I want to just get pretty close because this is going to be on the bottom anyway. We're not going to see this because this is going to be what's glued to the black piece of paper. But I want to just make sure that I have some pieces that are going to be uniform in size so they don't look weirdly like they don't belong together. Okay, I might need just to grab a smaller ruler. This one's a little bit, a little bit bigger for what I'm trying to do here. Uh, bottom line is I want to trim around all the elements of black here. Go do the same thing here on this side. Here, on here, nice. And uh, I'll just trim up these edges as well. And I recognize watching somebody cut pieces of paper out. Not the height of excitement. Hey, let's go to YouTube and watch some dude cut pieces of paper out. Said no one ever. Uh, however, it is a necessary necessary part of what we're doing here. And uh, I'm just going to show you how to do this and leave you to, to work on your own solutions in a moment anyway. Get that cut. There we go. Sometimes you have multiple layers. It's a little bit more challenging. Again, kind of clean that up. But here's what I'm trying to go for. At the end of the day, I want to have a square that has our two colors on it. And now the overall objective is going to be to lay these out pretty much as if we're creating a quilt where we can lay them across our black piece of paper and create a really interesting combination of colors and shapes and also the orientations, right? There's nothing to say it can't go like this or like this. So we're going to play around with a couple different variations on this. 
So I'm going to get to uh, I'm going to get to making a bunch of these. I'm going to make 30 of them. My uh, my approach here is I'm going to have five that go across and then six that go up and down. So it's going to be slightly taller and will fit into the uh, the ratio of our of our paper as well. All right, so off I go to do that, and uh, I'll let you know what it looks like in just a moment. Three days later. Welcome back. So I've had an opportunity to uh, to work on my different shapes, and I have a, a cornucopia of different cutout pieces. I have 30 different segments here, and again, they're all they're all backed with that black paper, the black cardstock. And that gives us some flexibility when it comes to placing these down. So I have my black piece of paper, my large sheet of paper here, and it's an opportunity for me to be able to start dry fitting things by just dropping the pieces in. And again, the orientation of this is really part of the design. It's going to be dependent on a few different things. And again, I'm trying to use a lot of bright colors and colors that can contrast with one another fairly well here. And there's not going to be any right answer, but one of the things that I try to do is to make sure that the same colors aren't abutting one another. And some, you know, for example, I wouldn't want to take these two greens and put them like that um, because I want something that's a little bit more abstract and kind of independent of those colors. And to do with the configuration of whether it's, you know, heading up or down or, or side to side on these pieces is really up to me. Now, I just so happens that these currently have laid out where they're going opposite directions, and maybe that's just the way I, I want to be able to do it. And in this scenario, I would come down through here and I would say, all right, let's 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 just create kind of a an interrelationship between these pieces. And let's try not to have anything that, you know, meshes. Like, again, these two, which are of the same family, I'm not sure I want them in the same row. So I might sort things out a little bit differently like this. But what I want to be able to do here is to be able to pull together just something that's going to look pretty nice. And the other thing I need to think about here is where do I start my, my courses, if you will. But before we do that, again, just an opportunity to kind of dry fit things in and, uh, and ask the question, does, you know, does this look good? Does this, do these colors work together if I put them in here like this? And it's going to, it's going to vary. It's going to vary. I'm going to do that. And let's see, I'll do that like that. This is a nice strong color to put toward the center of our piece. Sometimes I think about where the eye will be focusing when we uh, when we finally get this thing done. I'll, I'll do that and I will do that. So I'm, I'm liking the of every other way orientation on these pieces. I think that's working out for me. And uh, again, let me just try to... Now again, no right answer on any of how we do this. What I'm really striving for, of course, is just to create an interesting grid of how I'm going to do things. Now, as I said, I want to be able to take my, my straight edge of some sort and create basically boundaries coming across. And just, I want to set up the top row, make sure they're equal distant, and then I want to line everything else up underneath it. Now, I could come in here and use a pencil and put some marks in here. I'll be honest with you, I really don't want to have leave pencil marks on my black there because it actually shows up really well if we don't cover it perfectly. So I'm going to be very cautious as I put things down. I may test to make sure my rows are straight and I'm going to spend some time really eyeballing it. But the next step is really to start to glue the pieces down and make sure I have my final orientation for everything here. For the most part, when I look at this, there's nothing that jumps out saying, well, that shouldn't be like that. So I think this is a pretty good orientation. Now I just need to go do some gluing and I'll show you what the final looks like in just a moment. All right, welcome back. So it takes a little time to line everything up properly and get them glued down, but you can see it has come together and I'm actually really happy with this. It's, it's, it's doing a nice job. And again, the beautiful thing about working with the black background here is it really pops the colors off of this piece of artwork. So we don't have to go too extreme, but we have some bright, bright splashes of color here. We've got some patterns woven in here. And again, the, the goal of this project is to almost create a quilt of some sort using pieces of paper and orient it in a, a certain way. Now, again, your mileage may vary depending on what colors you choose. And one of the things to keep in mind when you are choosing a grouping of colors is that's what's going to show up. And so the interrelationship between all those colors is going to be a big part of what the overall output is going to be. So if you wanted earth tones or more pastel colors as your choice, then you could go with something like that. I have the tendency to go for more vibrant and uh, jewel tones sorts of colors. So I like those, but I think this looks really nice. The beautiful thing about any of the one hour masterpieces is it's the kind of thing you can knock out pretty quickly. Now, can you do it in an hour? It depends on how quickly you glue, basically. But uh, the process here is very simple. We have a good solid background. We create the individual pieces here by just creating an interrelationship between them, mounting them on a something that we can use to have a solid piece, right? A couple, we end up with uh, some colors 
and then we can lay the colors out in a way that really pleases us and brings the artwork all together. And so that's what we've done here today. So thank you, by the way, uh, for being here. As always, really appreciate you checking these videos out. And if you like what you've seen here today, please hit that like button. It really helps us out in YouTube and gets more people to see these videos, and I want to be able to do that. And if you're not already a subscriber, we'd love to have you come along for the ride. We drop a video every single Friday morning, and we'd like you to be part of our family and people who are really interested in mixed media, art, and its creation. Anyway, that's all I have for you this week. Thanks so much for joining us, and I'll talk to you next time.